Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, I am Timothy Johnson. I am the COO of Gallium Studios. Uh, we are a game studio, indie game studio, based in Berkeley, California. Um, it's uh, a studio that was started by Will Wright, uh, who uh, spoke on Friday, if you're not familiar. He's a guy who created SimCity, The Sims, Spore, co-founder of Maxis. Uh, and then our other uh, co-founder is Lauren Elliott. Uh, he's our CEO. Lauren um, has been in the game a long time. He was like employee number seven at Bruderbund. He is most famous for creating Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego? So those are the two guys that are kind of running the show and then they give it to me and then I try to make all the pieces work. Uh, joining me here is our art director, Rebecca Harrison. Hi. Uh, and so today what we're gonna be doing is um, uh, walking you through uh, this cool thing that we're, this is like as, as basement, sub-basement, ground floor as you can get, you guys are part of it. Uh, what we're calling our uh, Gallium Developer Program where we're, it's called user-generated content, but like where you guys are at, you might as well be, you know, employees because we're giving you the same stuff that we're using to build the games. Um, so um, let me share my screen. Let me figure out how to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, Zoom. I have like a thousand desktops now. Let's see. I think it's this one. OK, oh, there you guys are. see a PowerPoint kind of deal? Yep. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, Gallium Studios makes something great. This is our live demo. Um, and by live, uh, yeah, this stuff uh, was code complete about four o'clock this morning. So, hey, what could go wrong? Uh, who are we? So I just introduced us. Uh, there's me and Rebecca. Um, so the whole point of, of uh, the studio, I guess, uh, Will um, is really interested in, uh, these internal hidden connections between players and between things. So we have a lot of AI uh, that we're building into our tools and into the game itself. Uh, and this uh, program, uh, this user generated content program uh, is just another way that we can help players make a really unique experience. Okay, so how can you guys get started? If you haven't already, um, go to portal.proxylabs.com and go ahead and register there. Um, since, since this is so brand new, um, you guys are really at the beginning. We're only letting in select people. You guys are cool, so you get to do that. Um, so once you, once you uh, create an account, or once you register, you have to wait for us to like click the button to verify you so you'll get another email. So it's a, kind of a back and forth. Um, but once you get in, then you, uh, as of right now, you can go download uh, version 1.0 of our tool. Um, and the tool, uh, you download the zip, the zip file and open it in Unity, and we can get cracking. Um, if you didn't do that already, that's cool. Um, we've got all this information up on the, on the forums there, so you guys can play with it afterwards. But uh, Rebecca and I are going to walk through like a live, a live deal. If you're following along at home, that's cool. If not, just, just watch. Um, this stuff isn't that complicated. Um, with that, uh, it, it really helps if you already have a familiarity with Unity. You don't need to be an expert by any means, but you should be kind of familiar with it. Uh, we're using uh, version 2019.4.10.f1. Uh, that's the LTS we locked into right now. Uh, there's instructions on how to find that on Unity's website. Um, and then, um, yeah, so once you get, get that downloaded, you can open the project. Okay, so with all that, what is the end result? Um, so what you guys will be creating, uh, what, what, our, what our people in this program will be creating, is uh, starts out with what we're calling a blueprint. Basically, um, in Unity speak, you'll be creating a set, either one or multiple prefabs, of art that you have created, um, or audio, or uh, there's some deeper dive stuff. We're going to stick with like just kind of standard FBX art right now, um, and we'll get into the engine here in a little bit. But what will happen is you'll be able to create uh, your own art, use our shaders, or you can use uh, a couple of your own. We have, we'll, we'll get to that part in a minute, but using our shaders to make it look, it, it, creating a blueprint 
which will then, once it's been approved, uh, will just magically show up in the game engine, um, just kind of all automatically. Uh, and then once you have those things, you can trade it with your friends. We're putting together like a, a, an auction house to where you can sell it or trade it or gift it and all these things. Um, and uh, basically build your own content for the game. Um, all right, so I'm gonna pause here for a second and let's just jump into the final product. This is the part of the baking show where they're like, open up the <laughs> oven that's been sitting there for a while. All right, so this is the game. This is a very slim down version of the game client. Um, Hopefully the audio, I forgot to kill the, the music. Hopefully the audio is not too loud for you guys. Hopefully you can still hear me over it. Mm -hmm. So this is um, super stripped down version. This doesn't have any gameplay or anything. This is literally just our world renderer. Um, so in this game, Proxy, uh, which we'll talk about a little bit on Friday, um, it has a lot to do with a lot of things, but the part we're gonna focus here now is the world. And as you see, I already have two uh, kind of little creations, a whale and a stingray, kind of just floating and hanging out. Um, I'm gonna create some terrain real quick. So this is our world uh, rendering engine to where you can create um, these dynamic landscapes. And uh, There's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do. It's all turned off at the moment. The only thing I put in here is the world renderer. Um, but you can create different content. And as you go through the process, they will just automatically show up. So in this one, I created these five prefabs, uh, or these five UGC deals in one blueprint of seagull, shark, shrimp. Uh, let me click on this, seagull. There's a seagull. Let me put the seagull up here. You've got and, the comic book shader running, nice. <laughs> yeah, so um, you may have, the camera's fighting me. Uh, on the seagull and the stingray, I have our comic book shader, and on the whale, I have our smooth shader. Um, and then this is our, this is our world. So in the, as I said, this doesn't have any of the actual game code, so there's no objectives, and the, the, the landscape does all sorts of crazy stuff, but this is just a slimmed down renderer of the world. Um, and then, yeah, you have your own planet and you can play with it. I will show this off real quick. Will doesn't like things to have a back. So <laughs> there's no real back of the planet. Well, maybe it's broken. Maybe there is a back <laughs> to this planet. It's an infinite back. <laughs> infinite back of the planet. It should wrap around. Does it not? What did well, Aaron do? It, it did seven minutes ago. There it is. All right. <laughs> All right. So in any case, uh, this is our planet renderer. This is our planet tech. Um, and you guys can make stuff to go in here. All right. So let's talk about how you actually make things. Um, I had a deal. <laughs> there it is. Uh, OK. So I'm going to just fire up the tool, and then I'm, gonna, I'm just going to show you what I made, and then I'm going to hand it over to Rebecca, and she's going to walk us through some stuff here. Mm -hmm. So this is um, obviously Unity. And what I have here, this, if you download the zip file um, from, the, from the portal, um, this, we have a, like a sample project kind of set up for you. So. Um, what I've got here are the prefabs that I've made. Um, so seagull, shark, shrimp, stingray. Let's grab, let's grab the walrus. And so with this walrus, uh, what I've put onto it, and Rebecca's going to go in here in a second. Right now, it has a comic book shader on it. This is, uh, we, we've made little applets here to where you can change um, you can add multiple skins. Uh, these are just uh, the color sets of our shaders. Um, and it allows you to change the different colors and things like that. This is all RGB shaded, um, well, RGB textured. Uh, and if I run it. Yay. Mm -hmm. 
And then over here in my color set chooser, I have two skins on it. So I can choose, you know, I can just preview. And this is terrible for me because I'm colorblind, but <laughs> I wasn't going to mention it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this panel right here, this UGC tool panel, this is the, this is the real, the real part of it. Uh, we'll get more into this, but the UGC tool, when you've logged into the portal, uh, you can create an API key in secret, um, and then you can create a blueprint, and then the blueprint, and we're, we're going to do one of these live together here in a minute, but in this one, I called it um, the animals from the deep pack. Uh, I gave it a description of ocean-faring creatures, and in here, I built a seagull, a shark, a shrimp, a stingray, and then at the very end, I ran through our process here of validating, processing, building the asset bundles, and then submitting the blueprint. And what that gives us up in the portal after you've done everything, here's our Gallium portal, is that here is the blueprint, Animals from the Deep. Um, a lot of this is not working yet, so, <laughs> you know, just bear with us. But uh, I was able to create the, the blueprint since I'm a moderator, I also approved it. And then I was able to mint. Uh, that's a fancy way to say, go from blueprint to in-game. I, I minted one of them, and here's the com complete status of that. And then here's all the different um, items that are part of that blueprint. So I have a stingray, a whale, a shark, a seagull, and a shrimp. And then this is like economy stuff. This is going into the game. We'll talk about that stuff later, uh, about like, you know, how much it might be worth on the open market if you wanted to trade it with another person. But that's, that's not important now. Um, so yeah, if I click on my blueprints, I had another one in here called Haunted Clothes, um, which is pretty funny. And that's still awaiting moderation. Okay, so I know I kind of hit you guys with a lot of stuff all at once. So now what I'm gonna do is hand it over to Rebecca and we're gonna walk through um, using the tool and making, making something. Yeah. Alrighty, so let me share my screen. I'm gonna share just my whole screen. There we go. Blink. Hopefully this goes well. All right, can you guys see the diamond? Alrighty. Getting thumbs up from people. Cool, awesome. Thanks guys. Alright, so I'm going to talk more about best practices. Uh, so we have um, a couple of gallium shaders that we provide with the tool that are already set up, just optimized and designed to work with the general aesthetic of the games. So I'm in Blender here. Uh, you can use any um, uh, 3D editing software. It's up to you. I just like Blender. <laughs> um, oh, go away. Go away. How do I tell it to go away? Are you fighting Dementors? Yeah, it says Z has entered the waiting room. I'm just gonna ignore it. Okay, <laughs> maybe it'll go away. Okay, it went away. Um, so basically, um, every object in the game so far is using this single um, 128 by 128 texture. And, and the reason we use this technique with the um, RGB alpha and black is to make sure that we're not running into any issues when like, I want to load in your awesome like mech 3D art, but you have like five 2K textures on it and then the whole thing just hangs. So this is kind of like, if you really want to make sure that your objects are, are just designed right out of the box to work with our system, this is kind of a good way to do it. So, and, and we'll get into that in a second in the actual client. Uh, so um, I'm going to take this, diamond here, get into my edit mode. And it's only, I believe, yeah, this one's only about 112 faces, which is a really good place to start. I think we're going to end up capping the uh, level of faces or tries or whatever at around 5,000. So just a thing to keep in mind if you're, if you're planning on going into Turbo Squid and grabbing a 2 million poly uh, Hatsune Miku, it's not going to work. <laughs> um, so let's unwrap this from the start. So I'm just going to project from view and I'm just going to break it. Okay, so now the whole thing is broken. And I've created a little um, uh, sort of shader over here that is designed to let me see properly the colors of everything. It basically is, is taking into account the um, uh, 
the alpha and just making that white. So if I were to move this to the white area, it looks white, red, green, blue, and where am I? I've lost, I've lost everything, black, okay. <laughs> so let's head into orthographic mode, go to the front, and I'm just gonna start by grabbing the little sparkles, project from view again, make them a little bigger. And what I like to do, I like to just kind of, oh, let's get into face mode so I can grab them in here, kind of just make them nicely overlap the areas where we start to get, um, do, 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 gradients, just like that. So now you can see it's starting to come together again. And let's grab the full diamond, project from view again, and I'm gonna let it overlap kind of right over here. But what I also like to do, I just find this gives a really nice effect, is I'll grab some of the faces that I want to be a little darker. Nice. Do 3D art, you know how it is, but this is much better than doing it the regular way. Okay, nice. And so we pretty much got the same thing again. And obviously it's a little bit less refined than what I had originally, but I think it's a pretty good place to start. So the thing to remember if you're gonna be using Blender is that, um, oh, hello, hello Zoom again. Nice to see you. Um, uh, is that in Unity, Y is up, but in Blender, Z is up. I know in Maya it's different, um, but one thing you just need to watch out for if you're gonna be exporting out of Blender is you want to set it, go like RX negative 90 to rotate it 90, negative 90 degrees so it's uh, in the X axis. So it's, it's aligned with the Y um, axis. And you can lock in the uh, transforms with a control A location, rotation and scale. And so now you can see we're all zeroed out. You can rotate it back, nope, rotate it back. There we go. <laughs> um, uh, wait. Yeah, no, we're okay. Cool. Yes, that number looks accurate. Okay, yeah, I just I goofed up really. Okay. So um, what we could do is we can grab this, go to our export, FBX. And so I'm going to put it into, I believe I just made a nice little siege file. There we go. It's got my other gemstone from before, but I'll make a new one. So I like to make sure I have other and mesh. So you can just shift click these two and selected objects only. Otherwise you'll get all of your objects. Um, so if you know Blender, you probably know this already. Um, I'm just gonna call it SiegeCon Demo Gem. Export FBS. Nice. So that will have appeared da -da -da, right there in my folder. So now I'm gonna head into Unity. I'm just gonna double check that everybody can see this before I start talking about Unity. Everybody's good? Okay, thanks John. All right. <laughs> um, okay, so let us start by dragging. I can hide all these things. There we go, now I can actually see what's happening. There we go. Um, so I'm gonna take my new FBX and I'm gonna drag it from my folder into my project panel over here. And I'm already in my meshes folder, which is nice. So I'm just gonna let it go. And as you can see, it is now part of my project. It is not yet in the scene, which is empty. I'm just gonna drag it from my project panel into the scene and da da da. Look at that, it's in here. And I was right, I did mess up on the uh, rotation because if I reset this, it's gonna be upside down. <laughs> but luckily we live in a world where people are very forgiving of silly Rebecca's on live TV. So we're just gonna keep it like this and just the prefab maybe will will forgive us. If not, we can go back in and we can, we can fix it later. I'm curious to see what actually happens and how much the uh, devs have put into their validation. So I'm gonna test it live. Um, okay, so now we're in here, we have the gem and we're gonna go to the materials, gallium essential materials, do not alter. And I mean it, don't touch it. It'll mess you up, so don't do it. Um, and let's grab the crystal shader. Ooh, this looks like fun, okay. Yeah, so now we have a fun crystal shader to work with. And 
as you can see, you can kind of look in here and it's got all these settings, but don't touch those because once again, you'll be sad. So first thing I'm gonna do is add a component, which is a collider. Let's call it, I think a mesh collider, just because things are simple that way. Um, and then let's add a new script, which is, uh, which is contained in the project, which is the color set controller. Okay, so now we have what we need to have a functioning game object. So we have you know, the filter, the renderer, the collider, and now this color set controller. So it wants a couple things before we start. Let me give it a list of one materials. So it wants a renderer, which is just the renderer that is on the object already. So we just drag that in. Uh, the material is this material. So I just drag that in. Or whatever material, you, you can make your own if you want. Just be aware these ones will run the smoothest. And then what I want to do is add a skin. So I go to skins. And right off the hop, it gives me this um, red, green, blue, black, white. So you can kind of see um, what part is there. So I want the green to be kind of a nice bluey white. The blue will be nice, brilliant blue. Uh, let's have this be a nice dark sparkle, light sparkle. And there is no black um, in this model. But if you want, you can change it to something. Let's make it pink. Yay. And if you want to see um, uh, what this is at runtime, it'll actually show you. Ba -ba. See you, yay. And if you want, you can actually adjust the colors at runtime as well. So I can be like, oh, that's nicer. But bear in mind, it, because Unity is this way, it doesn't save this stuff at runtime. So you'll have to right click this, copy component, leave play mode, and then paste the component values in there. So now it's, it's fixed itself. Okay, so. That's all I believe I need uh, for this um, right now. And so what I'm gonna do is open my prefabs folder and I'm gonna drag it from the hierarchy in the scene back into the project panel and boom, it's gonna ask me, do you wanna make an original prefab? Yes. Okay. And interesting. Yeah, well, uh, you know what? I'm just gonna fix it, one second. <laughs> While Rebecca's doing that, um, uh, I just asked our uh, web guy uh, about password reset. Um, and so he is looking into what's going on with that for, for those of you who need to reset your password. Pay no attention to the woman behind the curtains. Huh? All right, so that should have fixed it. What's just happening? <laughs> well, that's okay. You're, uh, you're doing it fast live. That's cool. Okay, cool. So that's 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 that now. We'll we'll see how that goes. And what you can also do is you can grab your um, prefabs and put them in here in our UGC tool. And the way you get that is up here. You'll have a little. Um, uh, thing called the gallium tools. You just open that up, click this, and it'll just give you an undock version, and you can just put it wherever you want. It's just panels. Um, and then from scene, uh, well, when you're not playing the game, you press test prefabs in world, and then from the tool, you can see, do, 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 just give it a second, stuff like, all right, so it's a little bit too small probably, or it's probably just upside down realistically. Uh, like it here. Eh? No. Let's see yeah, you probably just need to scale it up. Yeah, a, a little bit of mesh. Which may or may not work at runtime. You may need to stop the start yeah. again. Yeah, I feel like it's probably in here. Uh -huh. It's a hundred. It's just too small. Nope, that should have done it. Let's try that one more time. Yeah, so what, what happens when you click the test prefabs in world, uh, we ship um, the same world engine code uh, in this tool. Um, once again, totally stripped down. It doesn't allow you to uh, do any of the cool uh, edits and transformations and things like that. Um, but it will allow you to see, okay, is this thing sized appropriately? You know, how does it look just on a, uh, a standard world with a standard terrain. There we go. Um, 
I think actually, Rebecca, the usually the vegetation starts to build. There it is. Um, this is this nice gives you just kind of a uh, a quick preview of like, okay, well, what would this look like, you know, in the world in the final in the final version of the world? Exactly. Um, that's still in there. There we go. Nice. And so that's probably a nice um, size for it. Um, perfecto. And then I just need to go in here to my prefabs. I set this back to that. Does that actually work? Thanks, Ryan. We think it's cool too. Thank you. <laughs> I figured out how I can look at your screen and chat at the same time. I feel pretty nice. proud of myself right now. <laughs> you should feel proud of yourself. All right, so maybe that'll work. All right, we're just going to assume that it worked. Um, uh, so that was good, and that looked great. And we have the correct size, which we set in uh, the mesh itself. It's got a scale factor, and it looked like coming out of uh, Blender, it looked like a thousand was a good one for us today. And so now we're gonna go into this section over here, which is the actual UGC tool. Um, so I have an API key and a secret, which I got from the website, and there's a tutorial about that. Don't bother stealing this because by the time you do, we'll have changed mine, so ha 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 ha. <laughs> you have to get your own. Um, but yeah, so we're just gonna start a uh, new blueprint. So let's call this Siege Gem, the shiniest. And we're gonna get a, uh, it needs a sprite for the actual blueprint itself. And I have prepared in advance um, a little gemstone uh, image, but as you can see, if I try to do it right now, it's not gonna work because it is currently set to a default texture type. You have to make sure that it's a sprite and then press apply. And now we can drag it in. Boink, perfecto. Um, let's, and now, so to the blueprint, which is the overall like set of assets, you can start adding individual prefabs. So I'm gonna grab the prefab I just made, SiegeCon demo gem, and put it right in here. So let's call this the actual gem um, for the marketplace. Ease buy. And I'm just gonna use the same Texture. We're working on this um, auto generate asset photo from the actual scene itself, but that's not quite there yet. And I will call it, uh, I'll give it a tag, which you can search in the marketplace, which will be sparkly. And it is a decorator. Don't worry about all this right now. Just, just, just pick decorator. <laughs> all right. And so we got our one asset. We can add as many as we want, but for right now, we're happy with this. So I'm going to start the process of validating. Mm -hmm. That's good. It's turned green and this one has become available. So now we can press process. Dun, 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 dun. Nice. And so that one worked. <clears throat> Build bundles. And this one might take a little while just because it's going through all the different places your object could, could show up. So we've got Android got a variety of other platforms. So it's just making sure that whatever we need it for, it is there for us. Yeah, when you, uh, and uh, we've got some uh, setup instructions in the, in, the, in the forums on the portal, but the, the short of it is that when you install Unity at that version, you're gonna wanna get the Android, Windows, Mac OS, and iOS modules, uh, because what she's doing now, she's building all the bundles, or it's building all the bundles for you. And then those will be uploaded to our servers. Um, and so uh, depending on, you know, uh, whoever runs the game in any of those formats will get your assets properly. Yeah, it'll come through. Yeah, so it's just thinking. Yeah, it just takes a little bit. <laughs> and for those of you familiar with Unity, I mean, this is, <laughs> uh, this is how Unity works. <laughs> classic Unity, classic, classic. What you gonna do? Um, but yeah, yeah, it's funny because I come from like, like my entire childhood was spent on like you know DeviantArt and Gaia Online and and IMVU and Half Life or in Second Life. Um, uh, so trying to use their tools has only prepared me for this. <laughs> it's like okay, okay. It's this lifetime of just creating and sharing art and community. This is just, you know, I'm actually, I'm really excited about this entire process and, and having all you guys 
in here and making your own art because I'm just really excited to see what everybody makes and uh, and see how this this whole thing progresses. I think it's been really fun. Okay, so now we had everything is green and we're going to submit blueprint. Boink. And this one shouldn't take as long. So JC asks, are there plans to have an uh, in-game editor for the later releases? Uh, and how's that coming? The answer is yes. Um, the, um, and it, well, all right. So there's a lot of things we're trying to do with the assets. The first one is those skins. Um, if you're using our shaders, then uh, at runtime, we should, uh, we're, we're putting together a thing like, so you could uh, potentially go and get this gemstone uh, of Rebecca's fired up in the game and then in game add new colorations using you know an in game version of what that editor is um, and then letting that you know creating that as like a new coloration so uh, you could do it for gem but whatever asset it is um, now you guys don't have to use our shader um, you can use your own shader that you've written the there are some limits to it. The first one, very bare minimum, is it has to be a universal render pipeline shader. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Um, but uh, from there, it's going to be too hard for us to expose your shader values and things like that. So um, so the short, short answer is yes. Uh, people will be able to modify things within the game, but it will be limited to if those things are modifiable. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And also another side point is like on your prefabs, uh, if you try to put your own scripts on it, those will just get ripped out in this process. So right. be aware. <laughs> yeah, so um, if you use Unity um, stuff like animation, uh, like the animation, Unity animation controller and things like that, those should all be fine. We are going to, all right, so when, when Rebecca was going through validating and processing the assets, uh, what the tool is doing is it's looking to see if everything's set up correctly and it's also looking for things that might be wrong like uh, if you added just any scripts you wanted it's going to kick those off because all that's going to do is throw errors when it gets into the game because those things don't exist in the game code mm -hmm. um, and then other things where you know tri counts poly counts uh, texture sizes all those things it's checking for um, but when it comes to audio, we're going to have our, so you can use Unity Audio. We are going to be putting uh, anything that has audio on it uh, will automatically get our scripts on it so that we can dovetail it or we can mute it or make it work the way we want to in the world. Um, as opposed to it just being some sort of annoying, you know, <laughs> looping, cackling, horrific monstrosity <laughs> that some, you know, you bomb someone with. It's just like the days of MySpace. The dancing Jesus. <laughs> All right, so um, so we've created a uh, uh, blueprint successfully created. So now we can check the status of our blueprint in the Galleon Portal website. Cool. Thank you, uh, Tool. You've done great. You can go to bed now. Um, let's go to the portal, uh, which you guys have uh, opened perhaps, and it's portal.proxylabs.com if you haven't. And so at the top here, yeah, I have more buttons than you do, haha. <laughs> but you should probably have a blueprints button here. I can Go in there and look at that. I have my other one which we tested with and now we have the shiniest, the shiniest of diamonds. It's a waiting moderation still um, uh, because uh, Timothy's got to do that. But um, I can look at the details. And so basically there's no data available for this one just yet. But for my other one, which we did approve, you can see all sorts of stuff. Yeah, so the status is complete when it was completed, uh, the number of uh, minting orders, and um, the, uh, the actual object as it appears in the game. And so the way I got this to happen was I minted this blueprint, so I'm gonna try it again, and I can uh, mint it with sparrows. Number one, yep. confirm. Nice, and so it's not started, but it will go through rather quickly, and then it will uh, it will spit out another one, and then we'll have two diamonds. Ha ha. Yeah, th this one doesn't update automatically. You'll have to refresh the page. Oh. <clears throat> oh, look at that! That was fast. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. So now we have two. Nice. Lovely. And then presumably at some point uh, it will. Ooh, a new registration. Hello. 
um, it will start to appear in the inventory as well. I'm curious. Yeah, there's a, uh, I'm caching your old inventory for three minutes, so you won't see it for three minutes. Oh, okay, that makes sense. All right, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much the whole process. Yeah, so, um, so let's talk about that for a second. So the, the idea behind the blueprints um, is that, and, and that it, it has to be uh, moderated, is that um, the blueprints are immutable. So when you create one, so let's say that you wanted to create, you know, a gem pack where you're making <clears throat> diamonds and rubies and sapphires and all sorts of colorations, variations and things like that. Uh, the idea is that once you've submitted it to the site, um, we kick off uh, some automatic moderation stuff that we're trying to catch <clears throat> so we don't have to have a human approve it every time. But um, right now we are human approving all of these. So once we've approved it, that is, um, you know, it's, it's immutable, it's concrete. So you can make as many of them as you want. And we, we feel safe at that point to say, okay, you know, if you want to make a hundred of them, go make a hundred of them. Because we know that it's, you know, not in terms of service violation, you didn't infringe someone's copyright, right? So the idea is that once it's been approved, you can make as many of them as you want. And mm -hmm. then buy, sell, trade, play with, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind. Kind of, that's kind of, the, kind of the thing. So I guess we'll open it to questions now. Um, so I see here that, oh, when you did that, my chat went away. Oh no, sorry. No, 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 it's fine, I'll find it. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so Quentin was asking, would it be a demo for sound and animation process? Yes, so uh, the tool obviously is still in its infancy. Um, that test in world, uh, we're gonna be adding all the stuff um, that could go into the world there. Rebecca showed you that drop down where it was like, you know, be a decorator or be audio or be a background or any of those things. Right now, decorator is the only one that's like actually working. Um, and potentially the flow will change a little bit. So if you decide, I'm gonna make a new audio asset, you'll probably choose that first and then it will walk you through the steps and then you can test that in the world and see, you know, uh, make sure it's working the way that you want. Um, so that's all gonna be coming in the next, you know, uh, couple of months as we, as you guys play with this, as you break this, as you see things that you want, uh, basically you guys are gonna be our first dialogue back and forth of how we can make this thing uh, work better. So to respond to uh, Z's uh, suggestions, just simply apply the transforms on the export settings in Blender. I completely agree. I just find that for me, it keeps resetting itself. So I just, because I do so many, I'm just like, I'll just make it sideways and then lock it in and then put it back. And then I never have to touch that again. So <laughs> you are correct though. You are completely correct. Uh, and for everyone who asked about the password resets, uh, it looks like, um, yeah, we're, that, that's coming. Apparently, uh, the, the email service uh, password reset SMTP setting isn't set at the moment, which is why you might try it and it's not coming through. So we will get that fixed uh, shortly. They're working on that now. Um, okay, let's see, what else have we got here? Um, Clark says, goodness gracious, I love the idea of exposing this tool chain in the most flexible environment. Uh, the game engine. Once the in-game editor has been shipped, will the game engine still be supported as a creation platform? Uh, yes, uh, this should all, uh, we're planning on, um, you know, just, just taking this as far as we can. Um, all the stuff that we're building, um, we as Gallium are building for, for proxy. Uh, is using this exact same tool. So really, I mean, you guys are joining the dev team by um, by using these tools. Uh, so anything that we add, uh, we're going to be exposing that uh, through the tools uh, and let you guys, you know, play. It's going to get a little bit more complicated once we get the, as I said, in that, uh, when I fired up the client, uh, that was completely stripped down to just be the the world engine. Uh, we have a lot of stuff that goes on top of it for proxy because proxy is a machine learning robot. Um, so, you know, that's going to be on top of it, but at least all your stuff will look good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and as far as the, um, the game engine itself, it's actually, um, so unity is its own entity that we're using. That's not like the property of Gallium in any way. So you just go to their site, unity3d.com 
Um, you can grab their game engine anytime. You can make your own games with it if you want to. <laughs> um, we're just using it just because it's such a nice um, kind of ubiquitous game engine in the community already that people usually have a little bit of understanding of, especially if they're, you know, kind of this sort of community where it's like, you know, going through game school, have some experience with open to the public game engines. So that's why we chose that one. So Ryan says, so in-game is a plan that these are limited resources you buy and sell. Yeah, still working on that, but that's definitely the over, the over idea. Um, this came from uh, the way that the Sims worked. Um, so in the Sims, you could go into like creative mode and build, you know, couches and furniture and you could build all this stuff. But if you actually wanted to then pull it into the game at game time, you had to spend in-game currency to bring it in. So that's kind of the genesis of this idea is that uh, you as creators can build as many things as you want <clears throat> and upload as many blueprints as you want, but turning them into actual game assets, there will be a cost, but then you can sell them and trade them and do all sorts of stuff with the in-game currency. <clears throat> yeah, um, uh, and to uh, respond to um, Nicholas's question, uh, is knowledge of 3D modeling a prerequisite to playing the game? Absolutely not, <laughs> absolutely not. This is sort of like a meta game um, for those who are really interested in like really being a part of like the process. Um, so there are certain like, like how do I describe it? Like you could, you could just play the game and you could never touch the marketplace if you don't want to. But um, if you really want to go whole ham and make your island and world as cool as it can be, um, you can probably, you know, buy some of the objects off the marketplace, really earn your, your place that way. Or you could take this approach if you do have the skills and kind of start your own little empire. <laughs> and so it's, it's just another, another level of depth that um, you definitely have access to if you have three uh, modeling skills, but it is by no means a prerequisite. So. Yeah, that's right. The, so the game, uh, Proxy specifically, is about memories. And it's about um, how those memories are associated, associated with each other, how they're associated with other, uh, other, other things. Uh, not to get too deep into it, but like a memory is intangible. So we try to then bolt all these tangibles onto it, like a photograph or a 3D object or an audio sound or things like that. And so we're, we're building and Rebecca um, is the art director. You know, we've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of things that we're building that will be available in the game. But, you know, um, we know that the dog that we model um, isn't necessarily going to be the one that, that you want. So, uh, instead of trying to anticipate and build the content treadmill of us every month putting out a new pack of assets or whatever, which we're going to do no matter what, it was like, hey, why don't we also open that up for you know content creators to come in and say, well, I'm going to create the best pit bull ever, or I'm going to go create the best you know German shepherd ever, um, because the, and you know you could just make it for yourself um, and don't share it with anybody, or you could say, you know, maybe other people want pit bulls, uh, and then make you know. A little storefront, sell pit bulls. Yeah, exactly. And then in the forum, there's definitely a place already for you to like start your own little store. And Quentin mentions like making an Excalibur. So there can only be one. It's like, that's exactly the idea. It's like, like if you want to mint one Excalibur, there will only be one Excalibur. And you can set the price to be whatever you want it to be. And let's say you've been doing this for a while, you're a pretty recognizable name. That Excalibur will be worth quite a bit and it can kind of add to your mystique and persona. So that's the idea. <laughs> right. And none of that has anything to do with how the game is played. This is just a nice <laughs> fun side thing of like, oh, you know, wouldn't it be cool? And we've, we've got guest artists already like lined up, like notable people who are gonna be jumping in. Um, I might as well just say it, uh, Ocean Quigley, he was a guy who uh, was the creative director and the art director on all the SimCities. Uh, I know he's already gonna be making some stuff. And then Will, um, Will's kind of famous, and Will has a lot of famous friends, so uh, he's already <laughs> kind of roping them into making some stuff too. But yeah, one Excalibur, that, there it is. Crushing it. Yeah, yeah, go noobs. <laughs> Power to you. That's exactly what we wanted to do with all these sort of premium materials and all these skins, 
is like, it doesn't matter if you, you know, you've been making 3D art for decades or if this is like day one for you. You know, you can, you can go in and you can just, you can start with just setting the skin colors and you can just say, I want, you know, a red diamond and you can just do things that way, you know? So we, we want to have definitely kind of like open arms in terms of this tool. That's, that's, I think ultimately Will's vision for this is like, he's always been about community and, and kind of the, the game above the game. You know what I mean? So definitely noobs are completely welcome. Uh, okay. Um, are there any other questions about what we're doing, what this is? Um, when it comes to support, um, it's going to, uh, we're going to get, try to get that, uh, that email password reset bug fixed. Um, they're working on it right now. So hopefully, uh, that'll be in a couple hours. Uh, we can get that fixed and you guys can get in there. Um, let's see, uh, Ryan asks, how would ownership of your creation work or is that TBD? That's a great one. So um, the creation, uh, the blueprint is where this thing comes from. Um, that, that's tied to your account. So um, if you create Excalibur, that blueprint is yours unless, and not to get too deep into it, you could actually sell or give gift that blueprint to somebody else if you really wanted to. But let's say you wanted to make some sort of like super rare object, you know, um, not sure where these might fit in, but like, I don't know, maybe it was a SiegeCon 2020 where someone made like the SiegeCon 2020 Excalibur and they decided to only make five of them, right? So they made one blueprint and they made five, they minted five of them. Um, so the ownership and the, and the, the, ch the chain of ownership, that's all uh, tracked so that it can always go back to the source originator. So if I go in my game, uh, let's say you gifted it to me, uh, so uh, I would actually see, uh, when I click on the details of Excalibur, it was created by Ryan. And then I could click on that and it will go to Ryan's uh, little profile page in our, in our system. Um, and so, but then I, you know, I, I, I gift it to Rebecca. Now I don't have it anymore. Mm -hmm. Same deal, Rebecca owns it, or she's the owner of that Excalibur, but by looking at it, it would always say created by Ryan, because these, these objects are immutable. Mm -hmm. And um, the question, I believe, uh, by JC, uh, where on the developer portal will uh, be the best place to ask for additional guidance on creation outside of the proposed material? Um, so yeah, just the UGC general chat. Um, I'm going to try and be in there as much as possible. Um, just start your own little topic and ask your questions. And then the community can reply, or I can reply, and it'll be fun. Um, so I don't think I actually answered JC's question. I think he's talking more like the legal uh, legal rights oh, to it. Oh, I see. Um, so, yeah, at the moment, and I'll have to get back to you because uh, we're still crafting, like, the, well, we, our, our lawyers are crafting, like, the UGC terms of service. Um, so at the moment, like, um, I think you, uh, TBD, let me get back to you on that one. I think if you're going to submit it to play in our game, we may ask that that one stay in our game. But, um I will get back to you. I'll, I'll put a, uh, a message up in the forum uh, talking about it. I don't think Will especially cares. I mean, this is your stuff. So if you, I mean, and how would I even know? So if you use the same Excalibur model in a different game, um, I think that's probably going to be fine. Don't quote me completely, but <laughs> I will fight for that to be fine. How about that? Nice. Uh, let's see, you got a few more minutes here. So it says, uh, does it keep only the original creator's information or will it have a blockchain S history of custody? Yeah, we're trying to go for like a history of custody deal. Um, still TBD, like um, uh, we just kind of stood it up and I've only traded one asset so far and the asset trading broke. So <laughs> TBD, um, I'm, I, but the, I'm not sure if I actually want the chain of custody, but um, it would be cool to have the chain of custody. So uh, stay tuned on that one. We'll see. We'll see what we can come up with. In terms of uh, Rebecca Quentin said something about a face limit. Uh, so faces is, is an unlimited. Is there a file size limit? Um, is that in terms of like the FBX or the prefab itself, or what what file precisely are you referring to, Quentin? Uh, furthering Ryan's question, I'm just gonna see how that translates to paper. Quentin's probably talking about like maybe the the size the megabyte size of the of the PNG that goes associated with it. Okay. Uh, is there a file size limit? Yes, there is. What is that limit? 
Um, that's, uh, if Zach is in the chat, that's going to be Zach's problem. He, he's the one who enforces <laughs> the limits on the tool. Um, TBD at the moment, the really the art style that we were kind of going for was kind of the more low poly aesthetic for like the stuff that we're building. Um, we need to be careful to make sure that someone doesn't make, you know, a magic sphere with a, you know, with a hundred meg texture attached to it or something to where if they put it in the game, it'll crash. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, we're going to have to figure that out together. Um, yeah. And um, how that translates to paid assets from the Unity Asset Store. Okay. That's a good one. Um, all right. So when it comes to uh, what you've uh, uploaded as UGC to our game, and that's also why right now it's a valid email. We need a valid email address from you because we need to be able to come and find you if we have like an issue. Um, copyright infringement and um, stealing people's assets. Like if you go to TurboSquid and just download some stuff and then upload the UGC. So the term to serve is state that you own the rights to whatever you're sending up. I think that's where that question was going to. Um, but yeah, it starts with you need to own the rights before anything else. Uh, we're, we're, we're hand verifying these things and we're also running machine learning through, um, through Amazon to try to help speed up the approval process. Um, but yeah, if it's like something that you download and you don't have the rights to and you upload, then we're gonna have to take it down. And then I believe includes paid assets because I believe that the Unity Asset Store is still just licensing and I don't think their license would include to us. <laughs> so. That might be too many jumps. Um, oh, good. Zach's in the chat. He's he's answering questions in there too. Oh, nice. Uh, okay, so I think we've kind of hit the end of our hour. Um, I really appreciate all of you joining us for this, and uh, you know, this is this is super new for all of us. Um, so uh, you know, I appreciate anyone. Uh, the warts and all of this and uh, bugs and things like that. We may have to destroy your blueprints four or five times before we actually get things running. Um, but yeah, if you have questions, uh, the, the portal is a great place to talk to each other, talk to us. Uh, uh, we will answer as much as we can. We're planning on doing some, uh, some YouTube streams uh, like every couple of weeks where Lauren, Will, uh, Rebecca, uh, other people, uh, may answer the top questions from that are coming in from the forum and things like that. Um, on what YouTube channel? We have a Gallium Studios YouTube channel um, that I've never clicked on the link. I don't know where it is. Um, <laughs> but I think if you just search for Gallium Studios, uh, we, we just set it up. So hopefully, uh, it probably has no, no videos or anything yet. Um, but yeah, check, uh, check the portal, galliumstudios.com. We'll put all that information up there as well. Um, yeah, and yeah. There are currently already Gallium Studios out there on YouTube, and we are not those ones. Oh, all right. <laughs> well, then just go to galliumstudios.com. We'll put the links up there. Uh, the galliumstudios.com is going to be revved, I think, tomorrow. We're going to put up another one, mm -hmm. another version of it. So, uh, OK, well, thank you guys very much. Uh, this was fun. And I uh, look forward to seeing you guys uh, in the in the portal. Awesome. See you guys soon. So Wes, luck. I'll let you take it from here. I mean, that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm going to stop the recording. Uh, everybody have a great siege, and thank you for joining us. All righty. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.